Tigana by Guy Gavril K is a Renaissance Italy type setting fantasy novel about oppression, history, memory, many other fantastic themes that are realized oh so well. But before we get into that, I need to say one, if you have not read this, it's going to be a must read recommendation for me, but this will be a spoiler free review because I know a lot of people in my audience have not read it and I don't want to murder this video in the analytics. So if you'd like it, let me know in the comments down below. And if enough people do say, I will do a spoiler review in the future. Also, if you're one of these booktubers, who insists on holding the book by their head the entire time they review a book, stop that. It's disgusting. Put it down and just gesture with your hands like a normal person. I know I gesture a lot, but it's better than doing this the whole time. So the reputation for Guy Gavril K is that his prose are some of the best in the game. Few people can even come close to matching what this Canadian author brings to the table. And yeah, I completely agree. Everything about the way this guy writes is so silky smooth. There is never even like a sentence that hit me as that was awkward phrasing or anything along those lines. The way he focuses the reader, the poetry of his structure was just truly outstanding. Guy Gavril K, I want so many lessons on YouTube from you about how to write like you because I wrote my book slower while reading Tigana because I would like read a few chapters and then I'd go to look what I wrote and I'd be like, why are you trash? It's all horrible in comparison. <laughs> so yeah, Tigana is written stupendously well. And, and, and I know there's some confusion about exactly what prose are uh, whenever I talk about them in reviews. And I just want to say they're basically the writing style of the book, how it's structured, where the author focuses your attention, and how the technical aspects of their writing. And so, yes, if you're someone who finds yourself constantly picking out this author reads in a way I don't like or reads in a way I do like, Guy Gavril K has a very high likelihood of being someone who you are addicted to just the way they are conveying information to you. But there are a lot of people who don't give a crap about the prose of a story and are more invested in the world history, blah, etc., etc. And thankfully for you all, Tigana knocks that shit out of the park. So setting this up a bit more here. This story takes place in a peninsula, and in recent events, a warlord has come through and conquered a whole lot, and in that conquering, there was one country, Tigana, that resisted him harder than all of the rest, and his son died in one of the battles. As a result, the dude do some bad juju boo 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 and just erased the people's history from their minds, massacred a whole lot of them, and now that is basically the setup of our story. We're now under the oppression of this guy and the resistance, the rebels are wanting to go fight him. Yeah! Sounds like a pretty straightforward good guy, bad guy tale, right? No. And this is really the first part of the review I really want to spend a lot of time talking about in terms of the actual aspects of this story. Guy Gavril K. I predicted because, you know, it's a bit older style in several ways for this book's presentation. I expected the morality to be a bit shallower because that's kind of the thing with classic fantasy, right? You have your monolithic bad guy and you're all good good guys and they fight. Not at all. Uh, in fact, this was one of the most sympathetic villains I've read in fantasy for a long time because of how much he has humanized this dictatorial figure, how much there is uh, time given to really making you, the reader, understand where he's coming from. And it's weird to be like, oh, this Kim Jong-un type guy, I kind of get it. Like, it's... <laughs> It's not the situation you expect yourself to be in. Um, but there's one other villain, a sorcerer, who's kind of the, the bad to his kind of bad, the real bad over there. So there's this other person who does fall more into that bad, bad guy. But even he, you kind of at least get. But transcending beyond that, then our protagonist, the ones who are fighting for the good, right? Like they're under oppression. They're the ones who have had their history and culture erased. They're gonna be the ones who are all good. No. There are layers of gray across the board. These people are selfish at times. They kill quite often. There is moral differences here, and there's not really a huge difference in the moral high ground. Well, there, there are, there's the worst. No one's perfect. You don't have a Samwise Gamgee. No one's gonna be your Sam. Love you, Sam. I'm not criticizing you. You're my homie, but no one's that good. Now, to me, this aspect of the story greatly lent to the narrative presented being much more compelling because resistance versus big bad has been done so many times, but resistance with some questionable qualities versus a big bad 
with some redeemable qualities means suddenly there's a lot more of a discussion and debate at the heart of this story. I think overall we can all agree the big bad guy who still conquered everybody is the big bad, but you don't necessarily pump your fist for every victory these resistance type people uh, occur with. And that's because these characters are so rich, so well realized, so consistent. Like I don't have many negative things to say about anything that Tigana brought to the board. If you like characters who have a lot of great chemistry with each other, you slowly learn about as the layers are peeled back and their history, and you grow to care about them quite a bit through their tumultuous past and their actions in the present, yeah, Tagana's gonna be for you, and that sounds like a pretty duh thing. Oh, you like good characters that are developing your story? Pfft, then you're gonna like the characters in Tagana. You like a villain that has redeemable qualities and is compelling? Pfft, you're gonna like the villains in Tagana. I also just kind of appreciated that it's not a typical medieval Europe story. It's Renaissance Italy, and that's made abundantly clear in the text. I just enjoy that because it's a little bit different. So I'm overwhelming praise right now. I need to switch to a Mike by more critical side, right? Like, okay, I've said so many good things about Tagana. Let's backpedal. Let's back it up. Get over here a little bit. What are some negatives? The pacing's not flawless. I I'm gonna go ahead and say there were a couple chapters, especially in the middle chunk of the book, where I found myself to be flat out bored. Which, you know, there's usually a slump a little bit in the middle of books. This wasn't egregiously bad. It was notable though, for sure. Uh, the ending and the beginning of this book are where it shines the brightest. It's where Guy Gavril K seems to be having the most fun with crafting this story and narrative as well. He really conveys quite a lot of world building in very few words. I might get some flack for saying this, but Robert Jordan could take a note because where Robert Jordan feels the need to give you uh, long grandiose descriptions about a person's uh, attire, which I think does serve a very particular purpose for the Wheel of Time and I do appreciate, Guy Gavril K is able to paint, I feel, almost as vivid a picture with a third the words. <clears throat> that kind of just rolls back to the prose praise I was preaching prior. <laughs> I would also say that while Guy Gavril K's realization of theme is as vivid and deep as just about any other uh, fantasy standalone story you could find on the market, because this is a one-off book, it did become so overwhelming at a certain point where there were a couple times where I'm like, that's really what's bothering you the most? You people are most angry about the memory wiping and not the massacre? Okay, cool, because this book's theme is about the importance of culture, the importance of your history, the importance of memory in, in broad strokes. And the people are so upset about that. But I'm also like, you made it really clear there was also a massacre. Are we not going to talk about the massacre? That I'd be mad about too. I'd be really mad about the people dying. Yeah, the history would suck, but like the people though, the, the living souls that were taken. But that's where my criticisms end. I was compelled. I was hooked. I was in love because Tigana, for me, is going to be a must read. It's rare that you find a book that feels like it's telling the story it wants to tell in masterclass fashion. This is that. I'm sure it's not for everyone's taste. The fact that it has a only 4.1 on Goodreads is a complete mystery to me. I don't know how this doesn't have like a 4.8 whatever, okay, fine. But yes, Tigana is an excellent example of what fantasy can be when an author has a vision and realizes it in a way where you can kind of just say, no one else could do this better. It, this is a great introduction, I feel like, to Guy Gavril K because I feel like I know him as an author extremely well. Side note, at the end of the video, also super progressive for the time he was writing this, the female characters are chock full of their own ambition and personalities. They're not relegated to the back like a lot of fantasy authors did during this time. And I know it's just the 80s, but that was still prevalent in fantasy at the time. And the male characters aren't like frothing with toxic masculinity. They're all just well-realized individuals who you can relate to even in their darker uh, moments where they make poor choices. In summation, yes, Tigana is borderline perfection. As close I've come across in a good minute here for the fantasy genre. Guy Gavril K manages to invest you into his character's story through treating them with deep amounts of respect and each one being fully realized from the good to the bad. His themes are strong to the point where it could be overwhelming to certain readers, but I don't think you'll mind so much as he crafts this luscious, vibrant world around you with prose and minimal word choices that are so sniper perfect, just sharp shot. That is what needs to be said to convey this exact feeling and vision and message. I just, I'm respecting it. I respect Guy Gavril K, and I want to see him in more young fantasy reader's hands. That's going to be something I'll probably be preaching for a while now. If you are a young fantasy reader, pick this up, because I know a lot of the older heads have probably read it, and I have not seen many young fantasy readers 
ever even talk about Guy Gavril K. In fact, it's been almost exclusively old heads who have recommended it to me. And if you need more praise than that to maybe pick it up, Brandon Sanderson himself has praised this book and this author several times. And I know all you young fantasy readers are big Brandon Sanderson fans, so if Brando Sando here is recommending it, you damn sure should pick it up as well. Anyway, let me know what you think of this review in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Am I totally wrong? What should I review in the future? What reads should I be getting to? I can tell you I'm reading Six of Crows right now, as well as another Malazan book, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and something else. I don't know. So many books are just around me. Have a good one, y'all. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Peace.